are two biblical keys i know that the waters has been stirred huh. there are two keys to receiving anointings mantles and graces the first key that controls the reception of strange graces and mantles please write it is an encounter with God himself when you have an encounter with the God of the Bible you can receive as a reward for encountering God directly from God Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus God can anoint men how God anointed Jesus direct encounters with God Solomon slept and had a dream and received an impartation of an understanding heart and the spirit of wisdom directly from God but number two which is the more common pattern we see in scripture is through the mystery called impartation write it down please impartation impartation Kalika praske venika pariyata kusa praske dash. Romans 1:11. Paul was speaking to the church in Rome. He said, "For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift, to the end that ye may be established." I think it was in Philippians 1 verse 7 or so. He said, "Ye all are partakers of my grace." when god grants a man access to an anointing you see the anointing and the graces of god are responsible for the dimensions of spiritual possibilities that we experience in this kingdom so the grace for favor will not produce healing no it will produce favor these graces have jurisdiction of operation so don't just say i am anointed no the anointing and the distribution of graces they are jurisdictional in operation the anointing for prosperity will not raise the dead it has its jurisdiction so the bible says in second corinthians 9 and verse 8 it says and god is able to make all grace say all grace not some grace all grace all the dimensions of grace are bound towards you so that he on account of those graces having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work God is able to make all grace please take it higher for me are we together now all grace don't say apostle I have the prophetic that's not the only thing needed for your destiny your heart must be open to receive all grace the bible says speaking to moses he says and thou shalt take joshua in whom is the spirit already and thou shalt lay your hands upon him and anoint him he says and then thou shalt take some of your honor and you will give to him to a man who is already anointed listen to me call laborers in the gospel by the privilege of God's grace, I can tell you, there is much more we can do for the kingdom. But our possibilities are limited by the extent of grace and the dimensions of grace that are at work in us. You see, the apostolic and the uh, prophetic anointing works like this. When you come into a region, because of how God has built you by the election of grace and the sacrifice of alignment, you are able to assume whatever mold God wants to release and distribute the graces that are deficient within a territory are we together now you can know the graces that are deficient within the territory by the absence of certain testimonies all you need to do is to take an honest appraisal of your life 
and an honest appraisal of your ministry and an honest appraisal of your test or your, of your territory you can tell the graces that are there and the graces that are not there and you can tell the degree of what grace is there because grace and peace can be multiplied by the time the sick still remain sick there is a grace that has not yet come upon your territory by the time lives and destinies are still confused that means there is a level of the accurate manifestation of the character of the prophetic to bring direction that is missing by the time the average believer in Adamawa and Yola is bankrupt of stature it means there is a dimension of the prophetic revelatory dimension of teaching that is not there because there is a grace that was upon Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 the Bible says when that grace comes upon a man you can make all men see all men can see regardless your educational background regardless your pedigree once that grace is upon you it can make all men see when there's widespread poverty across the territory there is what the Bible calls the power to get wealth it means that engracing is not yet there my assignment tonight having endured in the course of this conference is that among the many things God is going to be doing is he's going to be distributing spiritual possibilities in addition to that which you have received that there can be higher measures of the same grace and then virgin dimensions of grace that your hands and your destiny and your ministry has not yet captured for job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions in the spirit ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with exploring the deep things in god there are no generals there we the best of us still remains a toddler compared to the vast riches of what is available to the saints so paul prayed this way i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ is that true that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know he was praying over the church in ephesus to comprehend the kind of power that was exalted when christ was raised from the dead and exalted to be far above every throne dominion principalities and every name that is named not only in this world but even in the world to come i cry every time and i tell god i'm available more love more power more of you in my life when i go to him i don't go as a man of god more love there are still greater assignments more power more of you in my life you see there are many of us who have not been able to step into the deeper levels of the spirit because of pride overconfidence carelessness and ar an arrival mentality i prophesied to someone and the person had a child thank god for it but is that all i shared a revelation and that revelation <laughs> there are parts in the spirit tonight your heart must be open that a thousand cubits will be measured for you again that regardless what we have seen I submit to you by the authority of scripture there are many many dimensions we have not seen every time I read the Bible sometimes tears begin to come out of my eyes and my Christ Lord where did we miss it you read about these men and women who the Bible talks about in Hebrews 11 it says that they obtained a good report it says time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness tore the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life Yola hear me it is not because Satan is so powerful it's because men of fire have not truly risen 
and I'm not saying this to downplay and demean what you're already doing for God. I know that many of us in various ways are doing our best. But the Lord has commanded this apostolic and prophetic convergence because there is need for more. Yesterday's oil cannot solve today's problem. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The woman had oil, but it was too small to help her. Her issue was not the absence of oil. It was that the oil was not enough to take her out of debt. And the prophet said, the problem is not the oil. The problem is the vessel. Go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. And once there were vessels, he said, lock the door. Because there are things God will not do with you in public. Lock the door and let multiplication start happening. And the Bible says, as she locked the door, multiplication of oil and grace started. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Hear me. I know that your city is a prosperous city. But my question is, how many kingdom people have commanded the wealth of the kingdom? We keep jumping and shouting the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Yet our children are becoming prostitutes. Our young men are becoming armed robbers because of poverty. Can I tell you, do not say it does not matter. Every time Satan wants to destroy a people, he uses hunger. Hunger always sends Israel to Egypt. Hunger always sends Israel to Egypt. There is only one reason Israel goes to Egypt. Hunger. That means there are financial apostles that must rise from this meeting. You have seen it in your dreams. Men and women who will build institutions. Men and women who will say, under my watch, no pastor will compromise because of money again. I will stand as a financial pillar holding the hands of Moses. There are many men of God who started well, but because of this spirit of poverty, are now roaming around the corridors of compromise. I can tell you there are men and women here the mantle that is about to come upon you tonight in a strange way you will command the wealth of the kingdom but it will be without pride because you know the assignment and the purpose of wealth how about the healing anointing listen to me when you study the materials and the writings of men like smith wigglesworth before they died they left a prophecy and fathers of faith in this nation men like benson archbishop benson idahosa apostle babalola they left a prophecy that there is coming a generation greater than them they said it they said as great as it is there is a generation coming that will be accumulation of the former and the latter rain did the bible not say this is the generation of them that seek thy face O jacob can I tell you, one of the graces that must be restored to the body as we prepare to receive Jesus Christ is the restoration of genuine healing mantles. Most young people have not truly seen what a healing ministry looks like. Just um, thank God for the headaches, one wheelchair here, but most people, it will take people who are at least maybe 50 years and above, they will tell you that they saw the healing ministry men and women that carried power you would bring crutches out like you are carrying building materials hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again 